Guys, I've encountered probably the weirdest issue that I have ever come across in my 10 plus years of building PCs on the channel. You know, it's not often we get to build a PC from the typical black or white color scheme, but today we get to play around with Filmtake's brand new Hydrangea line of products. That's right, we have blue RAM, blue case, blue fans, and we get to have some fun with PNY's brand new XRL8 GPU. This is the 4080 Super, so it's gonna be an awesome little system. Let's get building. So for our case today, we're going with the View 270 TG ARGB case. Of course, in the Hydrangea Blue. I'm actually really looking forward to building it inside of this. Very unique color scheme that we're going for as well. And also a pretty unique layout. You can see that the whole power supply shroud is breathable. We've got all of these little holes all the way around. Up the top, we can fit a 360 millimeter radiator or three 120 millimeter fans, or you can fit two 140 millimeter fans up the top there. Beside the motherboard tray, we also have compatibility for two 120 millimeter fans, or you can fit a 240 millimeter radiator. And at the rear, we can also fit a 120 millimeter fan or a 120 millimeter radiator. And you may notice that it also has that tempered glass design that wraps around the front and the side of the case. So you've got full viewing of all your components inside. Now for our motherboard, I've decided to go with the Z790 Aorus Elite. I don't really have any real reason why I chose this over anything else. This is what we had on spare on the shelves, and I think it's going to go nice in this system. I mean, we've got DDR5 compatibility, support for the latest Intel 14th gen CPUs, plenty of IO connectivity, USB-C, USB type A, and 2.5 gig LAN. So considering it's the only motherboard we had laying around, it's gonna get the job done and fit nicely within this build. So for today's build, we're actually going with the i5-14600K. It's pretty much the only 14th gen CPU I have left, but not only that, we're only gonna be using Using it for a gaming PC anyway. And for gaming, the i5 is gonna be plenty enough. Not that it can't handle multi-threaded tasks. I mean, we're talking about 14 cores, 20 threads right here. Six performance, eight efficiency cores. But realistically, with a turbo frequency of 5.3 gigahertz, it's actually going to crush in games paired with our 4080 Super. And I'll be sure to show some benchmark performance and some thermal tests with the CPU. So make sure you stick around. So our storage choice today is the Corsair MP600 core and NVMe. It is a Gen 4 NVMe, so we've got that fast, reliable speeds that we're after. One terabyte capacity, and being the core, it actually comes in a lot cheaper than the Pro version, so we're not spending an arm and a leg to afford one of these. Now, as I said, we are just doing a gaming PC. Typically, I only play a couple of games at a time, so one terabyte is gonna be plenty of storage for what I need. And we obviously have plenty of upgradability inside the motherboard if we wanna add a few extra drives in. Now, of course, I also won't need the built-in heatsink, so we will be removing that as well, because the motherboard's already got its own heatsink. So for our RAM, we're going with the Tough RAM XG RGB D5. This is DDR5 5600 megahertz, two 16 gigabyte sticks for a total of 32 gigabytes. And of course it is in the Hydrangea Blue, much like every other component in the build. And the timings on this are 36. So it's kind of in the middle, not too bad, not the best. But I'll tell you what, the Hydrangea Blue makes up for it and it's gonna look super sick inside this build. And Thermaltake offers a limited lifetime warranty. I guess that's for the life of how long they actually make this product for. So pretty cool. Now for our CPU cooler, we're going with the TH360V2. This is a 360 millimeter radiator. Again, in the Hydrangea Blue, comes with the three fans as well. We've got a copper cooling plate and also a built-in 2.1 inch LCD screen where we can display things like our favorite GIFs, the temperature, our clock speeds, and various other information to keep an eye on our system. I mean, even the fins of the radiator are in that Hydrangea blue color, they're not actually black. So I'm very interested in how they achieved all of that and what the cooling is like with this AIO cooler. These have to be some of my favorite fans on the market because they're extremely unique. 
Not in the sense that they've got a magnetic clear together function, a lot of fans on the market have that now, but they actually have swappable fan blades. So you can actually take the current ones out and put the reverse blade in to keep the better looking side of the fan facing the build so it doesn't look ugly. You can always have the most aesthetic side of the fan facing inward. Now these particular ones are also in the Hydrangea Blue. So it's gonna match the case and all of the other parts perfectly. Now I have removed the fan from the case and we will be reinstalling a Hydrangea Blue one just to match the rest of the build. So for the radiator, it did come with three fans. We've got these three right here. Um, unfortunately, they're different to the Soir fans and I wanna keep the lighting and the look all uniform. So I'm actually gonna swap those out for the Soir fans. The LED lighting on here, they've got an LED lighting ring and different fan blades, so keeping it all uniform is gonna look better in the overall look, I think. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these ones installed instead. Oh, one last thing. These fans also have their own dedicated power and RGB, whereas these ones, they clip together and we're gonna have one cable coming off of them. So it's also better for cable management. Now for our graphics card, we're actually going with the PNY XLR8 GeForce RTX 4080 Super Graphics Card. Now back in the day, my first graphics card ever was from PNY, so I'm super excited to be actually trying another one of their graphics cards. Not only that, but it's a 4080 Super. We don't really have any Super cards on hand, so it's gonna be cool to test this out and see where it lies between the 4080 Ti and the regular 4080. So I'll be sure to get some benchmarks for you guys. And I'm also curious how the triple fan cooler design will perform. So we'll get some temperatures for you guys as well. I'd be super interested to see how the DLSS 3 performance is as well and how it looks visually in game. It also has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And I believe that this one also has a factory OC or overclock. So this one's gonna be fun to play with. So today we're going with our Tough Power 1200 watt power supply from Thermaltake. This is pretty much what we had laying on the shelves. I'm not gonna go out and fork out some extra money considering we've already got the power supply there. I always reuse my parts. Now, with that being said, for a 4080 Super System, the minimum requirement is around 750 watts, but realistically, you want a bit of headroom. So anywhere from like 800 to 850 watts, I would suggest for your system. But hey, this power supply is gonna give us plenty of juice, especially for next generation cards, so we'll be able to keep the power supply and not have to upgrade if they're that power hungry. Well, I'm trying to boot the system and we're getting some sort of VGA error. The orange light is stuck on, so I don't know if there's something wrong with the GPU, the motherboard, or, or what it might be, but I'm gonna test in another system. A few moments later. Well, I've tried the GPU in another build. As you guys can see, it's all plugged in and we are getting display. So that tells me that I think the motherboard is faulty. We just can't get a break. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna have to swap out the motherboard. We'll see what else we have on the shelves. Then we can finally test some gameplay and see how it performs. Later. Guys, I've encountered probably the weirdest issue that I have ever come across in my 10 plus years of building PCs on the channel. We've tried two Aorus motherboards. So we've got the white version of the Elite AX in there, the Z790. 
We also tried the black version and we're getting the exact same issues. We've tried different cables, different power supplies, different CPUs, different RAM, different everything. The fix that I found, I have all of the exact same components out of this build plugged in. The only difference is a different motherboard. This one is an MSI motherboard. And you know what? It works just because I have an MSI motherboard. It's almost like the GPU doesn't play well with Aorus motherboards or something like that. I, I still don't know what the exact issue is, but it works in the MSI motherboard. It works in my other motherboard in that computer, but for some reason, it doesn't like the two Aorus Elite motherboards. I don't know, that's beyond me, guys. If you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments for me and I'll do some further testing. Day two. All right, it's a new day. We are now going with the Z790 Apex. If I hit the start button here, we'll see if we can get something on screen from this. Like this whole setup is exactly what is going into the case. There's nothing different about it. So if it works outside of here and doesn't work inside of there, I feel like there's some sort of short or something happening. I'm not too sure what's going on, but hopefully we can get it to work. And there we go. So we've got display output. So now we'll go ahead and chuck all of this into the build and after at least five or six motherboards. Hopefully we have a PC that works. Eventually. Let's go. <laughs> we finally got it to boot up. Something is not playing nice. I don't know why five motherboards don't work. And then this motherboard over in our PC in the background does work. We had our MSI motherboard work. And now we've got our Asus motherboard working. There's something not playing right there. There's still something wrong. I don't know what it is. Let me know in the comments if you have any idea, guys. So starting off our benchmarks with a game which will really push the GPU hard. Cyberpunk 2077 4K Ultra settings. On average, we're achieving around 67 FPS. I did see anywhere between 55 to 90, depending on where we were looking on the map and what is visually happening on screen. CPU sat around 47 degrees, while the GPU was around 58 degrees. PUBG 4K Ultra I wanted to include because I know a few more people play it and it's an all-around game. The FPS drastically changes depending on where you are on the map. I could be in the 300s indoors and 200s outdoors. I'd say on average we're achieving 250 FPS with a CPU temperature of 47 degrees Celsius and a GPU temperature of 59 degrees. And now, for the final B-roll. 